thousands of years here. Aren't people waiting for him to come upon a cloud? It says the Lord will return through incarnation. So the Lord showed all this to us. If we don't cherish this once-in-a-lifetime chance and miss God's work of making overcomers, we will only end up mourning and sorely regretting. So the Lord said, He will come back and take us to the kingdom of heaven. However, what you're saying is that the Lord has become flesh to do judgment work in the last days. It is said right in the Bible, the Lord will come upon a cloud, all in glory. That sounds a lot different. You're saying that the Lord has become flesh in secret. This is a big thing because I can't figure it out. Please, just explain this to me. Yes, he will come on a cloud. He said it. The Lord will come here. There's no reason to dispute it. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but the Lord's word will not. So, what he says will have been fulfilled. This is what the Lord meant to tell us clearly. Thousands of years here, aren't people waiting for him to come upon a cloud? Before. I think that you just said, the Lord will take us to the kingdom of heaven. That is definite. Mm. Our Lord is faithful indeed, and so his promises will surely come true. Now we need to know his judgment, the second incarnation, will carry it out during the last days. This relates directly to how man is raptured into the kingdom of heaven. If we study the Bible carefully, it's easy to find this. It says the Lord will return through incarnation, so the Lord showed all this to us. Such as, Be you therefore ready also, for the Son of Man comes at an hour when you think not. For as the lightning that lightens out of the one part under heaven shines to the other part under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. But first must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. Many have mentioned that the Son of Man comes, or the Son of Man descends. When we talk about the Son of Man, it refers to a person born to a human and with normal humanity. So the Spirit, then, can't be called the Son of Man. Jehovah God is the Spirit. We can't call Him the Son of Man. The angels people saw. They're spirit entities. They can't be called the Son of Man. Any spiritual being that looks like a human also isn't the Son of Man. Lord Jesus incarnate was called the Son of Man, Christ, because he was the incarnate flesh of God's Spirit, becoming an ordinary man who just lived among us. So then when the Lord Jesus said, the Son of Man comes, the Son of Man descends, he meant in the last days he would become flesh again. Especially the words, but first must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. Better prove that the Lord would come through incarnation. If God didn't become flesh, but appeared as the Spirit, he wouldn't suffer as much, much less be rejected by this generation again, which is beyond doubt. Therefore, the Lord Jesus Christ will come back through incarnation and come to do the work of judgment of the last days. I often read these verses, which indeed mention the Son of Man comes and the Son of Man descends. Does the Son of Man here really refer to God's incarnation? People do question, Hasn't the Lord promised to rapture us into the kingdom of heaven? And why will he come to do the work of judgment beginning with the house of God? Actually, the judgment work of the Lord is to make overcomers. Well, that is, I mean, to take the saints. 
Let's see why the Lord does the work of judgment in the last days. There is evidence in the Bible. The Bible mentions about God's judgment in the last days. It's a lot. At least 200 verses. Many verses also prophesied the Lord will do the work of judgment in the flesh. Such as, And he shall judge among the nations, and shall rebuke many people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God, and give glory to him. For the hour of his judgment is come. It's also written in John, and has given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. For the Father judges no man, but has committed all judgment to the Son. He that rejects me and receives not my words has one that judges him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. The letter of Peter still mentions, For the time has come, that judgment must begin at the house of God, etc. All these verses clearly show to us that God will surely become flesh to do the work of judgment during the last days. God becomes flesh in the last days. He judges, purifies, and saves men through his expression of words. Whoever seeks and accepts the Lord when hearing the Lord's voice is indeed a wise virgin attending the feast with the Lord. This just fulfills the prophecy of the Lord Jesus. And at midnight, there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom comes, go you out to meet him. The wise virgins, they hear the Lord's voice and go out to welcome him. Unknowingly, they're taken up before the throne to meet the Lord, accept God's purification, judgment, perfection in the last days. Finally, their corrupt disposition will be cleansed in the judgment of God's word, and they will become overcomers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if we want to receive the Lord's promise, we must first come before Almighty God, Christ of the last days. We must accept His judgment and chastisement in order to be perfected and purified. Otherwise, we won't be qualified into the kingdom of heaven. Mm. Without the fact of God's work in the last days, no one understands how these prophecies will be fulfilled and accomplished. Yes. God becomes flesh as the Son of Man in the last days to do the work of judgment, which has indeed fulfilled these mm -hmm. verses. Let's read a passage of Almighty God's words. Mm -hmm. Page 1257. Okay. Almighty God says, You only know that Jesus shall descend during the last days. But how exactly will he descend? A sinner such as you, who has just been redeemed and has not been changed or been perfected by God, can you be after God's heart? For you, you who are still of your old self, it is true that you were saved by Jesus and that you are not counted as sinners because of the salvation of God. But this does not prove that you are not sinful and are not impure. How can you be saintly if you have not been changed? Within, you are beset by impurity, selfish and mean. Yet you still wish to descend with Jesus. You should be so lucky. You have missed a step in your belief in God. You have merely been redeemed, but have not been changed. For you to be after God's heart, God must personally do the work of changing and cleansing you. If you are only redeemed, you will be incapable of attaining sanctity. In this way, you will be unqualified to share in the good blessings of God. For you have missed out a step in God's work of managing man, which is the key step of changing and perfecting. And so you, a sinner who has just been redeemed, are incapable of directly inheriting God's inheritance. Christ of the last days brings life and brings the enduring and everlasting way of truth. This truth is the path through which man shall gain life and the only path by which man shall know God and be approved by God. If you do not seek the way of life provided by Christ of the last days, 
then you shall never gain the approval of Jesus and shall never be qualified to enter the gate of the kingdom of heaven. For you are both a puppet and prisoner of history. Those who wish to gain life without relying on the truth spoken by Christ are the most ridiculous people on earth. And those who do not accept the way of life brought by Christ are lost in fantasy. And so, I say that the people who do not accept Christ of the last days shall forever be despised by God. Christ is man's gateway to the kingdom during the last days, which none may bypass. None may be perfected by God except through Christ. Almighty God's words have shown us the way to the kingdom of heaven. Christ in the last days is the gateway to the kingdom of heaven. If we don't experience the work of judgment by Christ in the last days, we won't attain purification or perfection and will never enter the kingdom of God. This is the authority manifested by Christ, the incarnate God. It's enough to prove the Lord will definitely return through incarnation to do the work of judgment in the last days, which is a fact fulfilled by God already. Mm -hmm. If one wants to be taken into the kingdom of heaven directly without experiencing God's end time work, he still lives in his imagination and notion which will never come true. Here, have some water, everyone. Thank you. Help yourself. Please. Thank you. Your fellowship about the words the Son of Man descends, which means the Lord's incarnation, does make sense. Oh, thank God. But I still don't understand. If the Lord really comes through incarnation, then how do you explain the many verses that prophesy the Lord arriving on clouds? And every single eye shall witness him? Hmm. Yes. According to your fellowship, it is contradictory. Hmm. Brother Lou, hmm. would you mind, please, fellowshipping more with us? All right. Hmm. Before, you mentioned that the Bible prophesies in many places that the Lord will come upon a cloud with great glory. This is a fact. However, there are prophecies in the Bible mentioning he'll come in secret. For example, I come as a thief. For in such an hour as you think not the Son of Man comes, but of that day and hour knows no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Apparently, the Lord's return will be in two different ways. One way will be in secret, the other will be in public. Almighty God's work of judgment in the last days, which we testify today, is the Lord's work when He comes in secret. Because the incarnate God comes to the world as a man looking ordinary and normal. It is secret for all humanity. No one recognizes Him as God, nor does anyone know His true identity. After the Son of Man works and speaks, those capable of recognizing his voice start to then know him. Yet those who can't discern his voice will treat him as just an ordinary man, so as to deny and reject him. Just as when the Lord Jesus did his work in the flesh, he was like an ordinary man outwardly. So people denied, rejected him, and also condemned him. But some people, through the Lord Jesus' work and word, well, they recognized him as the incarnate Christ, the appearance of God. Now is when Almighty God is working in secret to save man. He is expressing his words to judge us, purify us, perfect us. During this time, people can't see the scene of the Lord coming on clouds in public. Not until he has gained a group of overcomers so his hidden work of incarnation comes to an end. And then, great disasters fall. The goods rewarded, the evils punished. He will openly appear to all nations. 
that time, the prophecy of the Lord's public descent will be fulfilled. Just as what is written in the Bible, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Behold, he comes with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him. And all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. So then at this point, we might as well consider, when people see the Lord publicly appear to them on clouds, they should be wild with joy as we can imagine. But right here it says that all kindreds of the earth shall wail. So why is that, we wonder? That's because when God appears to the public, his hidden work of salvation in his incarnate flesh will have been finished. Then God will reward the good and punish the evil. And then, all those who refuse to accept God's hidden work will thoroughly lose the chance to be saved. Those who pierced him, that is, those who resisted and condemned Christ to the last days, Almighty God, will see Almighty God, whom they resisted and condemned, is exactly the return, Lord Jesus. How could they not beat upon their breasts and weep unceasingly? So then, at that moment the scene, all kindreds of the earth shall wail, will appear. Let's read some words from Almighty God. Page 1433. Brother Wong. Yes? May I read it? Sure. Almighty God says, Many people may not care what I say, but I still want to tell every so-called saint who follows Jesus that when you see Jesus descend from the heaven upon a white cloud with your own eyes, this will be the public appearance of the Son of Righteousness. Perhaps that will be a time of great excitement for you. Yet you should know that the time when you witness Jesus descend from the heaven is also the time when you go down to hell to be punished. It will herald the end of God's management plan and will be when God rewards the good and punishes the wicked. For the judgment of God will have ended before man sees signs when there is only the expression of truth. Those who accept the truth and do not seek signs and thus have been purified shall have returned before the throne of God and entered the Creator's embrace. Only those who persist in the belief that the Jesus who does not ride upon a white cloud is a false Christ shall be subjected to everlasting punishment. For they only believe in the Jesus who exhibits signs, but do not acknowledge the Jesus who proclaims severe judgment and releases the true way of life. And so, it can only be that Jesus deals with them when he openly returns upon a white cloud. The return of Jesus is a great salvation for those who are capable of accepting the truth, but for those who are unable to accept the truth, it is a sign of condemnation. You should choose your own path and should not blaspheme against the Holy Spirit and reject the truth. You should not be an ignorant and arrogant person but someone who obeys the guidance of the Holy Spirit and longs for and seeks the truth. Only in this way will you benefit. In Almighty God's words, we get to know that God's work in incarnate flesh, in secret in the last days, is the most crucial part to perfect man. Mm -hmm. This is also an extremely rare opportunity for us to be perfected in God's management plan. All those who accept God's hidden work and are perfected are the most blessed ones and have God's special grace. Mm -hmm. 
if we don't cherish this once-in-a-lifetime chance and miss God's work of making overcomers, we will only end up mourning and sorely regretting. Your sermon is reasonable. It's the enlightenment from the Holy Spirit. Oh, thank God. Yes. You bear witness the Lord has been incarnated as the Son of Man to do the work of judgment. He'll make a group of overcomers before the disasters. He'll appear to all people and all nations. These are in line with the Bible. It's likely that the Lord returns in secret as the Son of Man through incarnation and then appears to the public. Understanding the biblical prophecies in this way will see no contradictions between them. So, if the Lord does come, in this way, it's secret and practical how wise it is. Hmm. The Lord is incarnated again to do judgment work in the last days, and this will thoroughly save us from sin and make us holy. This fellowship is practical and has light. 